Making objects uh, you can interact with in VR is really important. In the last video, I showed you how to actually make objects that you can pick up, grab and throw around, but I didn't show you how to interact with them. In this one, I'm going to show you how to make a very simple gun, so where you press a certain button your remote, it will fire, as well as an object that when you press a, press a button, it will change the colour of the light. All of this being powered, of course, by Normcore Multiplayer, so the what this is going to mean is all of the things we're building here are going to work in multiplayer already and it's going to be fantastic. If you enjoyed the video or maybe you're enjoying it already feel free to leave it a like I'd really appreciate it it really helps. Uh, if you've got anything you want to see next time please leave a comment I'm always happy to hear and you know if you want to see more give it a subscribe. Okay thanks please enjoy. So before I started filming this video, I made this empty game object called Gun and put two cubes within it, which are just, you know, to make it look fine. The only thing I have left to do now to make things all work is I'm going to just add a empty object in and we're just going to call this the fire point, let's call it. And this is going to be the point where the bullets are going to come out of it. And we're just going to place this right at the end of it, right about there-ish. Okay, and the reason I put it a bit further out is so that we don't get any weird collisions happening between the bullet object and this. So just like with the balls before, where we added the real-time transform, we're going to go into here. We're going to go into the main game object rather than each individual object, and we're going to add a real-time transform, which is going to allow this object to be synced between clients. And then we're also going to add in the XR Grab Interactable like before. And this is so that we can add in a trigger to it so it can actually do something. Next, we're going to make a new game object, which is going to be the bullet that comes out of the gun. And we're just going to reset its position and set it down to 0 0.1 on all of these, like the other balls we added in last time. Rename it to bullet. And then to make it so it's a real-time component, we're going to add a real-time transform to it. And then a rigid body so that it has physics. And then within this rigid body, we're going to change this collision detection option to continuous. And this will, I'll show you why we're doing this later. But if you don't set it to this, you'll find that your ball, like bullets, when they move at a higher speed, they'll just pass through objects. And that's not at all what you want. So we're just going to do that already. Then... I've made this folder called resources and I'm going to save it as a prefab inside it and then delete it from the scene. This is so this can be instantiated during runtime by the um, script. Next up, we're just going to make a new script onto the XR Grab Interactable, which I'm going to call Gun Control. And this is going to handle the creation and firing of the bullets. So now we've got the script open, we're going to get rid of the start and update method because we're not going to need either of them. And we're just going to uh, create a public transform and this is going to be a reference to the launch point object we created in the script. And we're also going to create a public string which is going to be the name of the prefab we created just now. And then also a float which is going to be the force that we add to the bullet so the uh, when it comes out of the, the gun it doesn't just drop to the floor because that's not what we want at all. Then we're going to create another method, which is just going to be public void fire weapon. And this is going to be the script that the XR grab interactable, sorry, this is going to be the method that the XR grab interactable calls when you like pull the trigger on your, on your controller. And it's going to use this to perform an action. So for this, normally we'd call game object bullet just to get a reference to it so we can add force to it later. And you do game object dot instantiate and then you go across and you specify the game object you want to instantiate but for real time it's well basically the exact same thing except we do real time dot instantiate and then we'll just add this in so we can get the ref so we can get the proper references to it and basically do the same thing we'll put our reference to the game object in which is going to be the name of the bullet we're in the resources folder and then we're going to specify the position of it and the rotation. 
and that is going to be the bullet being instantiated. Now, it's got that green line under it because it's, you can see at the bottom, it says that it's obsolete. I haven't managed to find any documentation on how instantiate options work, so we're going to do this right now. I'll make an update video in the future once I've figured out how that works, but for now, this does work and it works fine. Um, as you can see, there are some other options we could put in. Owned by client, prevent ownership take takeover, and destroy when owner or last client leaves. Those are pretty clear what they do, I think. Owned by client is whether you own it or whether the other person owns it. Prevent ownership takeover means that the uh, other person within your environment, other people within your environment can take over it and interact with it in different ways. And destroy when owner or last client leaves. All that is referring to is whether the object persists when everyone has left the game server. And for this, we want it to be false, so they don't persist. But if you're making something like an MMO, for example, you'd probably want a lot of items to persist in between, but maybe not the individual user to persist, for example. Okay, now all we need to do is do bullet.getComponent. And we want to get the rigid body, which I think I created and associated with it. And if not, I'm going to add it in a second and then add some force to it. And that is going to be equal to the launch point again, dot forward, which and dot forward specifies the. Um, so you saw when I created the launch point, it had the, the arrows referring to the X, Y, Z axis. It's the blue arrow, which is the Z axis is what the forward is on here. OK, I'm just going to multiply by multiply that by the firepower so that it's you know stronger it's a, it's the right power it comes out at a good speed okay okay good so now we're back in unity we're going to go into here into the gun empty game object like it was before go into the xr grab interactable go into the interactable events in here and in activated, which is what happens when you press the activate button on your controller, which you specify in your XR rig in the left and left and right direct interactor, which in here is trigger. Okay, and we're just going to add in this game, add it into itself as a game object, and the function we're going to want to call is fire weapon. Then we just add in the grab request component onto here. And we also add in the fire point into the launch point so it knows where to launch the bullet from. And we call the object bullet. And this is referring to the bullet object in the resources folder. So now we're back in the scene. If we teleport over to the gun and pick it up, we can fire it. And these objects being instantiated across clients and if there was someone else in here they'd be able to see me moving it around picking it up and, and all that stuff too okay very cool next up i'm going to just make it so show you how to sync custom data because right now the only data we've been syncing between clients is the real-time transforms like this and now also how to instantiate objects Next thing I want to show you is I'm just going to make a light, which is just going to shine in the middle of the floor here. And we're just going to have a, another cube where when you pull the trigger on it, it's going to just change the color of the light is all. To do this, we're going to need a custom norm core component, which we're going to build by creating a new C star script. And we're going to call it light changer model. Okay, don't know what these are. Ah, grab request and teleport control. These are the scripts you've already seen already. Okay, so if we open the light changer model, this is not what we want from this. We want to have this as a real time model. We do not want either of these, and we also don't want it to be a mono behavior. What we want in here is to specify the like the variables we want shared between our clients so in the case of this model all we need to do is share the color between the two clients and that's going to be just a private color and it needs to start with an underscore for this and we're going to just make this a real time property and within this we can specify property id which you probably want to start at one 
we're going to specify whether it wants to be reliable and reliable means it will keep sending the data until your client has confirmed it's got the data something like a real-time transform that can be unreliable because if it misses one packet it doesn't matter and it can just send it again something like this where we want to guarantee that the data that the light has actually changed color we want it to be true to make sure that it actually knows the object's changed color and then finally we want a did change event so that we can find out on each client whether the object has changed okay now from this now that's saved we also need to add in a using normal but real time first actually before i forget and then we want to go back to here wait for it to do all this and then you'll see that if you click on the light change model script it's got this compile model option so if we click this now and we go back to this you'll see it's now got all this extra data in it and this is the the all the code that's going to allow this to run properly okay so now we want to make the actual light changer script we're going to directly apply this light changer script onto a new light within our scene which we're just going to make as a spotlight okay so let's reset its position put it here and we can see it just shining on the floor there let's make it a bit we don't need to increase its range we want to increase the angle then look if we change the color you can see it, it very slightly changes the color of the of it on the ground so let's just increase the intensity to make it a bit more obvious now you can see when we change the color it also changes the color of the the light okay perfect so let's just leave it at white to start with and i will now add a new script to it called light changer based on the name of the light changer model create and add that open it up which is this one and for this we're going to want to turn this into a real-time component um, of type light changer model okay and for this we obviously once again we need to add in using normal dot real time and then from here we can start building out this class to allow things to properly interact between clients we're going to start by removing both of these methods and creating three new ones one is going to be the colors we want it to cycle through which is just going to be public color colors uh, private light spotlight and uh, just an int to store which is the current light where you wow that was not what i meant to type i wasn't looking at my screen as i wrote that i didn't expect all that a private int which is going to be the current light index which is going to just start at zero okay and then we just need a basic function which we're just going to call as an awake function this time and which is just going to be setting the spotlight to get the component of the light object within the within the object okay now we're going to create the method which is going to be called by our light changing cube and we're just going to call this change color and this is this is going to be a basic method which is if the current light index is less than the total length of the list minus one because it's one greater we're going to just add one to it Otherwise, otherwise, if I put it in the right place, else, just reset it back to zero. You know, so it loops properly. And then we're going to use the proper norm core method, and that's by using. So, from the light changer model we have here, it creates a model within it and that is referred to as just model within your script and that's the the synced up model between your clients so we're just going to call this we're going to replace that with model.color as you can see it's pulled it from here <clears throat> and we're going to set it to whatever the current light is the problem is now 
this is not synced up between clients. This would, because we are not actually updating the light color anywhere, this isn't actually doing anything. So firstly, to update the light color, we're going to want to create a method called update light color. And I'm, I mean, I normally spell light color with a, with a U as well, you know, but uh, all the other colors in, in Unity are without it. So I'm going to do it like this. Um, so anyway, with this, we just want to replace spotlight color with model.color. But this still isn't being called anywhere. And so we also need to create a method which is the one that is called by normcore when the color changes. And that is going to be color did change. And that is going to take in a light change in model because it's just how it has to be. That's just how, how this method will get changed. And it's going to be color. And then, oh, sorry. And then also take in the, a color because that's once again, just how it works. And that's just going to call out update light color class. Now we could have defined update light color within here and not had it as its own separate class, but there's one more thing we need to do, which is create an extra method, which is going to be a protected override void because we're overriding one of the things within here, which is an on real time model replaced class. And so this is on real time model replaced. As you can see, it's got the suggestion there. And from this, we are going to do. So now within here, we want to check if the previous model exists, which we're just going to do by doing previous model does not equal null. And if it isn't null, we want to unsubscribe the previous model from our color to change event because we no longer want it impacting that. And that's the color did change event we specified below, uh, right here. So we want to remove it so it's no longer impacting or changing the color. And this is this is a just it when the something changes on color, which is what this is, it would call any classes that have been added to it. And we don't sorry any methods that have been added to it. And we don't want it doing that. And then we want to do a similar thing with the current model. It's not exactly the same, but you'll see what I mean, which is just checking if this one exists. And if it does exist, we want to check if it is a fresh model, which means uh, this is the first time my client has seen it or it's not populated yet with data. Well, it's not if we haven't seen it, it's if it's not populated with data yet. And inside the is fresh model, we want to just that the current model's color to the initial spotlight color, which is the one I just set in the editor. And then we also want to update light color following this, which will mean that, you know, so if it's not a fresh model, it will update it to whatever the color is within here. If it is a fresh model, it will update it back to this color, which of course doesn't do anything, but you know. And then we want to register the current model for the color to change event. And there we go. Okay. I've added a new object to our screen, our scene, which is called light switch. And same as before, we're going to make this next our grab interactable. And we're also going to add the real time transform to it. Perfect. And then finally grab request. Uh, the grab request script, if you haven't seen it because you haven't watched previous videos, I will just put it on screen now so you can see it. And it's just this very basic script which gets the real time component and the grab interactable and it checks if the grab interactable is selected and if so, requests ownership of it so that when you're holding it, you own the object and you can move it around. Just thought I should specify because I, I hadn't done yet in this video. It is in other ones, but I just want to make sure everyone knows what's going on. Okay. So now, as before, this is that light switch. XR grab interactable, we go down to the active and then on the activated tab, we're going to drag in our spotlight and we're going to go into the light change script and specify the change color function, which is a one from here. 
public function, which loops through and changes it to the right color. An important thing I just forgot to do, of course, is to go into the spotlight script and actually add some colors to our array. So they're not all just black. So we'll make a nice green, a red, and then just a purple, just so it's so we can tell when the color's changing. Okay. Now back within our scene, if we head over to objects, we can pick a book. This thing still works fine, so that's cool. And then if we pull the tr pull the trigger on our lovely light switch, it now changes color. And this will be synced up between all the clients connected to the scene. Very cool. Thanks for watching. I really hope it helped and I really hope you enjoyed the video. It takes a lot of work to make them. So the fact that even one person is watching them is really appreciated. If you enjoyed it and it helped you, please leave a like. If it didn't, don't worry about it, I guess. Um, and if you want to see anything in particular next time, feel free to leave a comment. Let me know. I always like to have feedback and especially what, other, what people want to see. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching. See ya.